How's it going? Okay, well, we'll get started. So I'm gonna, I was gonna start with a, uh, a very corny joke. And the joke is this. How many atheists does it take to change a light bulb? The answer is two. One to change the light bulb, and the other to videotape the job. So fundamentalists won't claim that God did it. <laughs> that was in honor of us video team. <laughs> So, um, yeah, uh, welcome everybody. Um, this is probably one of the first, one of the more formal uh, events that we've held. Um, so I just want to welcome, of course, Don Hunter and uh, Emily Ken Allred. Um, basically, uh, we're here tonight. Our topic is to talk about uh, public, uh, public education and secular education in Alberta. Um, and this is all coming to light because of uh, because of the lack of a secular option in Warrenville, which uh, I'm going to tell us all about, I think. And, um, yeah. Uh, I'm going to start by reading out the mission statement, just so, because there are a lot of new faces, so, I mean, just to kind of, just so we know why we're all here. Um, <laughs> the Society of Edmonton Atheists aims to foster a sense of community within Edmonton and surrounding areas among atheists, agnostics, and freethinkers. Uh, to promote a positive image of atheism within our city and to support constructive activism towards a more secular and tolerant society. Uh, obviously, this uh, topic may fit directly into that, which is great. Um, are there any newcomers here that are not part of, or well, I guess we have a lot of faces that came here specifically to Donna. Uh, is there anybody else that saw us on Facebook or on our website? If you could raise your hands. Fair enough. Uh, if you'd like to join the Society of Atheists, um, you can join on our website or you can uh, talk to uh, myself, Daniel, uh, Marion is up front here, and uh, Michael Hartman is over there. Uh, we can all uh, uh, take a membership fee. It's $10, it's, uh, and that just goes to mostly keep, uh, to rent spaces like this. and. Uh, with that benefit, you'll get the, uh, the ability to vote and a bunch of stuff. Or if you don't want to become a member, but you still want to find out about their other events, just let us know. We'll take your email, add it to our, our mailing list. We send out a couple emails a week. And, uh, and uh, yeah, you can come out to our parties and stuff. We do it every couple of years, or every couple of months. A couple of years. <laughs> a couple of years once the other planets align. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. There we go. Uh, we also have t-shirts and pens that are available. I don't know if we have any here tonight, but they are ava available to be purchased for, uh, I think it's $25 for a t-shirt. 20 if you're a member. 20 if you're a member, and uh, you get a pen free with membership, or uh, available for, what did say, two bucks? Do you have t-shirts? I found them, but, uh, the, uh, but they're not here. They're in my trunk of my car. <laughs> <laughs> I, have, I have five sitting in my back closet. Because so. I really wanted a t-shirt yesterday when I went to vote at a church. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's an excellent idea. Oh, right. Yeah. Before the next election. That's right. Uh, in terms of upcoming events, we've got uh, this Thursday in Warrenville at the Seniors Rendezvous Center. There is a forum on the same topic. Uh, I understand that Mr. Allred will be there again, and uh, I'm not sure who else is going to be there. Uh, the speakers are David King, uh, the Public School Board Association of Alberta, Patty Dietrichs, the president, and then as well as going to be Linda McKay Panos from the Alberta Civil Liberties Research Center from Calgary. And we're also having Dr. Frank Peters from the University of Alberta. And one of us. Yes. <laughs> Jennifer, Jennifer Love will be speaking for us, we have back there, pretty well. And uh, the speaker for us, actually, what it is, it's just a public forum, so they're, all the speakers who have a spot are going to have 10 minutes or 5 minutes, and then it's just open for 40 or 15 minutes, and if you have a question or if you have a comment or if you want clarification, that's the time. So anybody in Warrenville or outside who wants to know what the situation can come and ask a question. We're trying, yeah, that's what, exactly what we're trying to do as a town hall set up. Um, we've got a blood drive this Saturday on May 7th at the uh, at Canadian Blood Services on campus. So, um, we should show up about noon. Uh, 
Eleven. Eleven today? That's time. Okay. Yeah, we got about five appointments booked from eleven o'clock on just oh, most of them are bunched around eleven. So if you show up at eleven, don't worry about what space space it is. Oh, okay. it's booked under C and uh They've been in the walk-ins if you Yeah, don't worry about uh, coming in having too many spots because they will take our blood. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it's just as good as anyone else's. That's right. Um, there's the Imagine No Religion Conference that's happening in Kamloops this weekend? Yeah, is that this weekend? And it's... Um, so I can't get blood because I'm going. Yeah, and uh, speakers there will be PC Miners, I believe, among others. If uh, anybody knows who that is. Uh, the Gay Pride Parade is our next big event on June 11th. The following week will be the Summer Solstice Party. Um, watch your email for more information about those events. Uh, our next meeting, our next round table will be on June 7th. And uh, we haven't picked topic yet, so again, watch your emails. And uh, lastly, we have June 26th, we have booked... Uh, they changed that date, but... Oh, okay. So apparently it's not a firm date. But we have uh, uh, an engagement with the Westwood Unitarian Church. And it's going to be sort of an Ask an Atheist kind of event. Um, as I understand, it, is it we're going to be speaking for the parish in front of the parish? Or is uh, well, it's it's very informal, small. Sure. Uh, More okay. details to come. Yes, again, watch your email. Um, yeah. So if there's any other announcements that I've missed, the highway cleanup. Oh yes, the highway cleanup. We every <coughs> fall we do a highway cleanup. We have a stretch that we're responsible for from uh, out near the airport. From uh, what is it? Um, details again in the email, but uh, <laughs> we, do it, we do it every year. <laughs> Just uh, it's, it's one afternoon worth of work. Um, you know, we make the, the highway a little bit cleaner, we make our products a little bit prettier, and it's uh, it's good exercise anyway. There is a sign though, right? There is a yeah, sign. A sign. Yeah. Yeah, if you, I've if never seen it. I've looked and I've never seen it. It's uh, right after Halliburton. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right after the Halliburton it was there tonight. I come from Wetaska and I, oh. I look for it every time because I'm always waiting until somebody has yeah, it's been, found it's been some distortion to it. But it's good. It's clean. It's, it's shiny and it's spelled correctly. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. Good to know. I'm just circulating a sheet of paper as a contact list. If anybody wants to put their email down and don't think they're already on our email list, then please, uh, please do so. Oh. Welcome to join us at the Friday. So I'm going to turn it over to Dan, and uh, he's going to try to talk about it. Nobody wants to sit with me. <laughs> You're welcome to join us. Okay. Yeah, I wanted to introduce Donna by touching a little bit on some news items. And um, it's kind of interesting because, here's the article that I got here. Warrenville parents jump ship. And that would be uh, you and your family. And so this situation has evolved to the point where People like Donna feel they have little choice but to leave town. And uh, I believe you say you moved up there 10 years, right? Moved in 99, right after high school. Yeah. So, I mean, that's a sad story to hear somebody having to relocate their family just so they can seek out secular education. Um, but part of the reason I point this out as well is that there has been a lot of articles in the journal um, lots of different media sources that have talked about this. Um, so it's been good publicity, and I think that, you know, even though this, this fight might take a long time, the word is, the word is slowly getting out there. Um, I wanted to raise two other news stories, and you know, move over to Donna here. Um, The first one was uh, something I came across this past weekend. I put it on the website about this uh, the Pope's preacher is visiting Edmonton. And this is the fellow who said that to criticize the Catholic hierarchy for their abuse of children is equivalent to anti-Semitism. 
And this fellow is speaking this weekend um, all about atheism and secularism and rationalism, apparently. And uh, I was here this weekend. It would be interesting, but not. So. And the last article I had was about why do you Americans still dislike atheists? And I came across this today, and it's so bizarre because it's talking about how, you know, long after blacks and Jews have made great strides, and even as homosexuals <coughs> gain respect, acceptance, and new rights, there's still a group that lots of Americans just don't like, atheists. They, those who don't believe in God are widely considered to be immoral, wicked, and angry. They can't join Boy Scouts. Atheist soldiers are rated potentially deficient when they do not score sufficiently spiritual in military tests. And surveys find that most Americans refuse or are reluctant to marry or vote for non-theists. In other words, non-believers are still a minority denied, in practical terms, the right to assume office. It's pretty interesting like, to realize how much, maybe it's not as bad in Canada, but that same type of uh, dislike still exists here, I'm sure. Um, so yeah, I have just contacted Donna completely out of the blue through the phone book and said, hey, are you the Donna Hunter that been in the news? Yeah. <laughs> and I said, don't worry, I'm on your side. <laughs> um, we just were interested because we talked about it here a bit and lots of us have lots of strong feelings about this particular topic and, and it falls within our mission statement and we'd like to hear firsthand uh, what your experience has been. And especially I think some of us want to know in what ways, you know, by doing this tonight we wanted to say that we're supportive and we're behind you. And if there's something we can do in a more active role as well, we can talk about that. And, uh, Thank you.